We have here Steve Dewing, professor from Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication from Arizona State University, USA. Welcome on the ground of Platsky University, professor. Nice to have you here. Very nice to be here. Uh, so at first, uh, we would like to talk about American elections and which you uh, point out three advantages and disadvantages of both candidates? Uh, well, the, uh, it's been a very interesting election. There, the, uh, we have one candidate who has a great deal of experience, uh, Hillary Clinton. She's, uh, uh, she has been not only the wife of a president, living in, the, uh, uh, living in the White House for eight years, but also served for several years as the Secretary of State for the United States under President Obama. Uh, she has, uh, and she also was a senator from the state of New York, so she has a range of experience that most uh, presidents uh, don't come into office with. <coughs> uh, her opponent, uh, Donald Trump, uh, his only real experience is as a businessman. He's a real estate developer. Uh, he's also a sort of TV uh, person who had, uh, who had created a reality TV show. Um, He's absolutely not a traditional candidate, and many people feel he's uh, wholly unqualified to be president. On the other hand, a significant minority, but a significant minority of the American uh, electorate uh, apparently are prepared to vote for him because of the often outlandish pro uh, promises he's making. And would you tell us uh, uh, your opinion? Who will win and who should win? Uh, my opinion would be based on, again, having read what real pollsters are doing. I, I personally have not have done any uh, polling myself for it, but uh, based on what I've read, I think uh, the clear likelihood is that Hillary Clinton will win. Um, the, uh, and, and part of that, even though the overall electorate is pretty evenly split. There's, there's maybe only a couple of points difference between uh, Clinton and Trump in the overall electorate, but the American election system is very unusual in that each state has its own uh, differing power in choosing. And, and the group of states that are more likely to support Clinton uh, are bigger and have more, more clout, I guess I would say. So I would say uh, uh, Clinton will be the winner uh, or, and certainly should be the winner. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> back to Donald Trump, uh, would you say that uh, business experience is uh, the most important, uh, important thing when you try to become a new president of the United States of America? I would not say that. Uh, you know, the problem with being a business executive is you're used to giving orders and having everybody follow your orders. That's not the way the American presidency works. A uh, president is a leader, but not a king. And uh, I, I'm afraid that Donald Trump is going in with the idea that he can just give orders and everybody in the country, or certainly everybody around him, will do exactly what he says. And that is not the way at all that, uh, that, that the American government system works. Uh, all right, from your point of view, it seems like Donald Trump is a bit of a dictator, maybe? He f sounds like one, he certainly talks like one, um, and that absolutely is not in the uh, American tradition of leaders, and that's one of the reasons uh, there's a great deal of alarm uh, about the idea that, you know, I guess it's not impossible that he could win, even though there's sort of a 90% chance that uh, Hillary Clinton will wind up being the winner, uh, there's still a, you know, not zero chance, uh, a 10% or so chance that things could break in certain ways and uh, Trump might wind up being the winner. I, I think that would be a, a real difficulty for the United States and frankly for the larger world. Uh, I think uh, many of the people I've talked to here in Europe are concerned if, if uh, Trump won, uh, his, uh, you know, his friendliness to Russia mm -hmm. is a, uh, certainly is a concern, his, um, his not very strong uh, belief in NATO is uh, certainly a concern here. So I, I think uh, you know, while we Americans have the most to win or lose by who winds up being uh, chosen president, I think uh, many other parts of the world also will be affected by that. And do you think he will follow his promises? Uh, I don't. Many of his promises are impossible to follow. Uh, you know, the, the 
first silly promise that he made was, you know, building a wall all the way across the southern uh, United States, uh, you know, a high wall to keep, uh, keep Mexican uh, immigrants out. Uh, frankly, it's a ridiculous promise. It would cost, you know, tens of billions of dollars, couldn't be done, and it's not the kind of thing he could just order. Oh, and he, and he also has promised that Mexico, in fact, would pay for it, which also is ridiculous. And why so many Americans trust Donald Trump? Um, because he's promised them the things that they think they are missing in their life, uh, and there, there is a, a portion of uh, Americans who've, uh, whose uh, lives have not gone as well as they'd hoped. The, uh, uh, the economy hasn't worked out well for them. They don't have the education to get new jobs and so on. So when Trump says, Uh, basically, his, Trump's promise is, I'm going to make America the way it was 30 or 40 years ago, back when it seemed like it was really good for, for people like you. Uh, there's no way that you can turn the clock back like that, but it sounds good to people who are, uh, don't believe they have any other you know, hope, I guess. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, let's look at the media. Are they in the United States? Uh, some TV stations or newspapers uh, which support one of the candidates in public? In theory, no. The, uh, one of the sort of ideals of good American journalism is that uh, newspapers and TV stations and so on are supposed to be objective reporters of what is happening. In reality, of course, there are, uh, there, there are stations, there are newspapers uh, that <coughs> lean in one direction or another. It's, it's sort of famous that, that Fox News tends to be um, uh, right-wing um, and uh, tends to favor right-wing candidates, though they've actually been very hard on Trump, uh, at least some parts of Fox News, because they realize he's not good for, uh, not good for America. On the other hand, there's, there's a whole range of other sources of, I won't call it news, but of opinion or uh, way almost propaganda that many people listen to. Uh, Breitbart is an example, or the Dredge Report, uh, which are you know, very uh, blatantly cited in one direction, in this case in favor, of, uh, in favor of Trump. Of course, there are sites that are very blatantly in favor of Clinton as well, but the loudest sites, the ones that, that seem to have gathered the most attention, again, from, um, from people who are supporting Trump, tend to be these very right-wing, far-right uh, kinds of sites that are willing to basically put out you know, complete lies about, uh, about Clinton. And yet uh, some growing portion of, uh, of the electorate believes those, those lies, even when uh, you know, the true facts are pointed out, they're not hearing that because they're only getting their information from these right-wing sites. Mm -hmm. And to uh Could you name some reason why, for example, Bernie Sanders or Ted Cruz didn't reach the final round of elections? Because from our point of view, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, that's like a reality show. It's hard to believe that those two candidates are in the final round, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's not hard for me to believe that Clinton would be. Clinton, again, is a, has long experience uh, As a, as a government uh, official and elected official. So she's you know, absolutely been elected to high office before. She has you know, worked with uh, world leaders, and so she clearly is the most experienced person out there. She's not a very good candidate. She's not one who likes to uh, go out and talk to the crowds and uh, so on. She tends to be very cautious, uh, and that comes across as cold. Uh, to, burn, to compare her to Bernie Sanders, who's you know was very exciting. He was saying, in a way, he was like a, a left-wing Trump. He was making promises. Oh, we're going to have free education, and and healthcare will be just like it is in um, in Scandinavia, where everybody gets free healthcare and so on. Uh, the trouble is, is you know the people who's, who are saying, oh, that sounds great, they're not realizing that it actually is very expensive, and he had actually no plan at all for paying for that. So, uh, so Bernie Sanders drew a lot of support during the primaries from people who were passionate about him, but when it came right down to actually getting the votes necessary to become uh, the candidate, 
uh, he, uh, he didn't get it, Clinton did. On the Republican side, um, Trump uh, basically was willing to use his, uh, his willingness to say horrible things about every one of his fellow candidates. He would make up names about them, he'd lie about them. He, he was basically the loudest candidate. He got most of the attention from the press because he's so outrageous that the, the news media would cover every crazy thing that he said. So he would get, you know, 80 to 90 percent of all the airtime and the attention, and the other what, 16 or so candidates on the Republican side, uh, they just kind of withered away and died and, and uh, never could get the support that Trump did. On the other hand, you know, Trump keeps talking about all the support he had. In reality, he got about 40 percent at most of the Republican votes during the primary. They, all those other candidates were you know, getting a majority of them, but there were so many of them that it was all split up. So he wound up being the winner of a large pool of candidates, most of whom were, were pretty ridiculous, but, you know, two or three had a chance at least to, uh, uh, to get attention. If Trump hadn't been in there, one of the others, you know, Jeb Bush or somebody, likely would have been the uh, candidate. But Trump basically took all the air out of the room and uh, got all the attention. Do you think that uh, many media have some fundamental influence on who reached the final round of the election? They, they certainly have an influence in that uh, lots of people don't really pay a lot of attention to certainly an election campaign that runs like two years. I mean, be, these people have all been running for months and months and months and months. Most people, most Americans have jobs and lives and so on. They don't want to pay attention every day to all this kind of thing. So um, the, the news media, on the other hand, will pay attention to the candidates that are most likely to be producing news. And Trump absolutely was the candidate who was producing news. He produced it by saying outrageous things like the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the Mexico wall or by making fun of, uh, the, uh, you know, the parents of the, the dead uh, Muslim soldier, uh, you know, those kinds of things that, you know, are to some degree horrifying, but he would say those things, everybody would wind up writing about them, they'd use it on TV, and so all that airtime and space in the newspapers was going to Trump, and, uh, and that was really the, uh, I think, the thing that kept him out in front all along, and his willingness to just say, you know, he would say anything for attention. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> according to you, uh, should media try reach objectivity or uh, rather be subjective in public? Uh, I'm a strong believer, and, and based on my own experience as a reporter for you know forty something years, uh, it you know it was trained into me to be as objective as possible. Now, media objectivity doesn't mean that we don't have opinions. I absolutely, and as I've expressed here, I have, I have opinions. Normally, I don't, I, I, I put it this way, I know how not to put my opinion into my news stories. Uh, I'm trained to do that, and, and good reporters are trained to, to uh, not put in loaded uh, things. That's sort of the American tradition in journalism. That may be changing. Uh, we may be getting more to a more European or actually world approach on, uh, on journalism. Many other countries in the world have uh, journalism where uh, the, you know, the paper or the TV station or whatever has a distinct political uh, bent on it. And you know, Fox News in the United States has proven that you can make money by, by taking a particular stand or MSNBC on the, uh, on the left wing. Uh, uh, side of it, just by trying to appeal to a group that wants to hear that. Personally, I think that's a bad thing for democracy and the population. If all you hear is your own views being sent back to you, then you don't really discover what else is going on. But on the other hand, all those newspapers and TV stations and websites and so on, they're all businesses. They all need people to actually watch them and read them and pay attention to so that they can get advertising money. If you don't write things that people actually want to read and hear about and so on, you won't make money. Mm. Uh, all right, back to elections. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, is there some reason why elections in U.S. looks like uh, look like reality show? Uh, is it some kind of mobilization of voters? Um, the, well, certainly the voters get mobilized by the candidates, and that's one of the things Trump is able to do. He can say, "Okay, I'm going to have a rally, and he'll pick a city, and his you know a bunch of his most fervent uh, supporters will show up, and they will yell and scream his name, and they'll." They'll wear hats that say "Make America Great Again." They'll wear, wear T-shirts attacking uh, Clinton and so on, and it becomes like almost like sort of a big party. And he will draw them together, and he he draws sort of uh, you know ego satisfaction from having the crowd yell his name. Um, so there is a kind of reality show aspect, certainly to the way he's doing it, which is not surprising. That's his background. I mean, he he became known to the larger. Uh, country and world through his television shows, his reality shows, and uh, you know, like uh, Apprentice and and uh, a couple. Of, I, I never watched them, so I'm not very, I'm not, a, not good at naming them all. But that's how he got known. Um, are we moving into a world in which I don't know Kanye West may become a presidential candidate in 2020? I don't know. You know, that's how that's how people learn the names of people and uh, so on. But it's actually not a first time, even for America. Uh, Ronald Reagan, who was, you know, a, a president in 1980 through the, what was it, 88, I guess, um, was uh, he was a movie star, uh, though he did at least spend a couple of terms as governor of California. He got elected governor because, again, he was he was known by being a uh, being a movie star, and then became president uh, largely because of that name recognition. So, uh, is name recognition going to become more important than true experience? Uh, that we have to wait and see, I guess. All right. And do you think that the rest of the world, for example, Czech, Re Czech Republic, should learn from American media and present election in the same form, in the same way? I, I, I personally think the right way to, to do elections is to objectively cover the the uh, ideas of the candidates so that the, the people that, that, that the journalist is writing the stories for or preparing the TV, uh, uh, TV interviews for can uh, sit down and then they can make a rational comparison between the candidates. Oh yeah, I like what they're pushing here. Oh, I'm not very happy about that. that. That is the ideal of the way it should work. The problem is, is in reality, way too many people who have the power of the vote don't really pay attention or they get caught up in a slogan, you know, make America great again. You know, that's, that's just a single slogan that itself doesn't mean a lot. I mean, it's, he's basically saying, well, America isn't great. Well, you know, a lot of us think America's still actually pretty good. It's certainly not the, you know, the dystopian hellhole that uh, you would think it is uh, from, what, uh, from what Trump is saying. But there are people who can grab onto a simple slogan like that and, and not have to think about all the other things that are, um, uh, that are happening. So is it good for the Czech Republic to, to uh, be, a, uh, for the Czech journalists to be objective and to give good investigation of all the candidates and lay out all their uh, policies? Yes, I think that's the right way to do it. Uh, unfortunately, in reality, I think uh, Czech journalists are discovering, just as American journalists are discovering, that you know it's hard to get the attention of voters and to get them to think about all those those policy things. So that's uh, that's a problem to be uh, wrestled with. Uh, I think there are good, responsible Czech journalists out here out here who are doing that kind of thing, the right thing. But there'll be others who will say, you know, I can uh, I can just make some stuff up, and more people will read what I'm. Uh, what I'm printing than uh, if I actually had to spend a lot of time doing real research. So we'll see who wins on that. All right, one last question. Uh, I think the answer is clear, but let's ask. Uh, will you confess, will you vote for Hillary Clinton? I have already voted. Uh, and uh, I, I guess I will stick with my long-standing practice of, uh, even though it's fairly obvious which way I certainly would be leaning, uh, I, try, I try to keep my own uh, actual political choice private. I think that's something uh, you know, journalists should do. I, 
I, for one, in a matter of objectivity, I never give money to any political candidate. I don't put bumper stickers. I don't wear hats that either say, you know, Hillary or Donald, uh, those kinds of things. So I tried not to, uh, uh, to I guess, wear my opinions uh, loudly. So I will play coy on saying who I actually have already voted for. Okay, that was Steve Dewing, professor from Arizona State University USA. Thank you for the interview.